If you have a big camera and want to shoot super smooth video, there's no way to avoid using a gimbal. Feus Corp. It's fresh, innovative and full of surprises from the good ones. Is it a trustworthy choice? Let's inspect! Hey guys and girls, really good to meet you. I'm Michael and what we do here on the channel is inspect fresh and cool smart tech. So, something really special coming up today. Uh, that's the latest coming from Feutech. It's a gimbal for DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Well, obviously, right now I have my Sony ZV-1 mounted because using the bigger camera to record this thing. But one of the most portable and capable and smart gimbals that you've ever seen. It's called the Scorp. Uh, actually, if you if you look closer here, you're gonna see uh, a Scorpio engraved, and maybe they called it the Scorp because of this, because of this really awesome handle. So um, there's a lot of things to say about this gimbal. Generally, I, I know that everybody has his or her own priorities about such kind of gear. Well, to me. If something is not portable and easy to fit in a backpack, and if I have to shoot like 20 seconds, I would rather go outside with the Sony ZV-1 and a much smaller gimbal and get the job done. But uh, in the past weeks, I've been using this body and actually it made my workflow a bit easier in these times where I actually need a gimbal. You're gonna realize that some of the previous episodes I've actively used this body. So you're gonna get my pure, genuine, feedback about its real-life experience. Disclaimer, I got the unit for testing from Feutech uh, and really kudos to them for still being interested in my opinion after I didn't really spare them the criticism of the Feu Pocket 2. So uh, yeah, I was looking forward to try this out and let us dive into this episode and figure out whether this is a reasonable alternative to the obvious market leaders being the DJI RSC series. The Scorp is in here, at least it was. Correct, it's unboxing time. From what we can see on the outside, three axis stabilization. I would have highlighted the display because, as you're going to see in a moment, it's a game changer. True, they are not the first on the market to come up with this solution, but better late than never. Taking out the carrying case, a bonus point, and this looks really compact, so kudos to Feu for packing it that well. If you think the shape looks familiar, well, I think about the same. Since unboxing is about the boxes inside, here's what this little guy has to offer. Some cables, control cables. Next, you can call me clumsy, and maybe sometimes I am, but this shouldn't have happened on a good quality box. Correct, I pretty much have torn the area which holds the plate together. Now, this is Arca Swiss compatible, by the way, a commonly used format. Surprisingly, I see more and more gimbals going for this standard lately. Because I prefer things to be easy, safe and click-based, immediately placing one of my favorite PGY-Tech's snap-lock plates. What we see from the gimbal so far, nice and solid metal construction and looks like something which is worth properly testing. Prior to showing you how it operates, let us get to know its main characteristics. There's a three-axis mechanical stabilization thanks to the powerful motors, integrated hanging handle, a 1.3-inch touchscreen, magic wheel used for various tricks, integrated aileron bracket, brand new CPU inside for all the calculations, 2500mAh battery with fast charging, A to B point trajectory memory and weight of close to 1.5 kilos. You're going to notice a lot of buttons on the body of this gimbal. Most of them are really useful. It's like a Swiss army knife full of surprises. For instance, if you forget your tripod, the one that I'm holding right now. So if you're on the go and you figure out, oh, I forgot my tripod. This can be used instead of a tripod. It's not the best solution, I have to admit it, but can be a life savior in case you do need a tripod. For instance, some static shots uh, of products. Uh, other than that, here on the sides, the power button, the A and B section buttons amazing for my workflow they were precious direct fpv button trigger button and here we have the f1 and f2 functions which are configurable and that's besides the controls uh, a shutter button and uh, the joystick what i would highlight here is this the magic wheel we're going to talk about it in uh, just a few moments now in order to get used to all of that it's going to be a bit of a learning curve so i would suggest 
first thing, go ahead, read the manual. Then go on Feiyotex website, check all the videos because they have a lot of tutorials. Then read the manual once again and probably then you're going to be operation ready. Balancing the camera as a starter, take your time here and a variety of different models and lenses are supported. Remember that it's good to check the balance prior to each shooting session. Switching to another lens is gonna make you start the process over, but this is not too bad since you can take shortcuts and memorize the positions for each of the axes when you switch the lenses. If you're looking to cover the basics, just power the gimbal on, set the preferred follow mode and record whatever you need to. The gimbal supports most of the commonly used movements. Pan follow, pan and tilt follow, FPV, inception mode, it's all here. Unlike other gimbals where tuning the motors requires connecting to the app and being super patient, here just find the setting that you want to tune and go for it. For instance, if you notice vibrations, rather easy to fix, it's a matter of a few taps. Damping is customizable, so you can make it super smooth and slow. This is what I use for shots like this, which most people may think are done with a slider, but not. There's an optional focus motor that you can purchase for about $80. I don't have it here, uh, but if you, if you decide to buy it, you can also use it for a zoom motor, and that can come here really handy. Now, the thing I liked the most during this review is the magic wheel. It's just amazing, you know, it can control any direction that the gimbal supports. This is quite amazing. Uh, it's actually the first time ever where I do use a gimbal and thanks to the way the handle is implemented and thanks to the way this here is placed, I, I felt like I'm doing something meaningful with both of my hands without disturbing the operation in any way. So I would say yes, this magic wheel here is an excellent implementation. As for the display, great for not too bright days because in such occasions visibility is going to be bad. Anything that you do indoors or at dark is gonna keep you happy with it. Touch-based, very, very useful. Whatever you need is a few taps or swipes away. Interface is definitely not great, but within a few minutes you're going to get the logic and figure out how to get the most out of it. A lot quicker than any sort of button-based configuration. The third really awesome implementation is indeed the handle, because, well, that's how you would usually keep your gimbal when shooting, but if you need those super cool low angle views, you know, there's no magic you gotta do, you know, you just, just hold it. Maybe you can remove the extra tripod uh, for easier operation. That's amazing. Being a lifesaver, and you've definitely seen a lot of this footage in uh, some of my recent robot vacuum reviews. Feiyu, of course, advertise a lot more than that. Like the trajectory tracking, indeed, nice to have. Smartphone app is also good, brand new design. I hope to see updates to the functionality and less bugs, because Feiyu's software has never been close to impressive. So yeah, through the app, full control of everything. As you can see, this gimbal covers all the must-haves, but also brings a lot of useful, and I underline here, useful extras. There often are nice marketing tricks with devices which sound great but don't really do much. Not the case with the Scorp. Did I find any drawbacks? Well, yeah, of course. Well, as, as a starter, I very often accidentally press the F1 or F2 buttons because they really are uh, close to where my fingers are staying. Not a deal breaker, but could be annoying. Also, the battery life from the promised eight hours, I only get around six with Sony A7C and a 550 gram lens, which is not that much. So battery life has not been superb, but I would say acceptable. The embedded tripod is nah, not that great. Good to have, but unimpressive for product slow close-up motions. Easily gets shaky. Sometimes, in certain conditions, the handle is too close to the arm, which definitely is a deal-breaker for people with big fingers, unlike mine. So, what do you think? Is this a worthy competitor to the DJI RSC2 series? Or you're still not convinced about its IQ and capabilities, and do you find its footage more stable than usual? 
And, and generally, what, what do you think about this Scorp? Does it have any chance to be one of the most popular gimbals out there? Or fail to have to work really a lot on the software side? Anything you have to share is welcome in the comment section below the video. As usual, more information about the product and links to the best possible deal I managed to squeeze for you is placed in the video description as well. And thank you very much for being with me until the end in uh, this review episode. And I'll be back very soon with more. So be subscribed to the channel, enjoy life, take good care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.